In the Gospels, during the presentation of the baby Jesus in the temple, Simeon prophesied that Mary's heart would be pierced, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And after Jesus died on the cross, the soldier pierced his heart with a lance and outflowed blood and water that converted the soldier immediately. And he was inspired to proclaim, this man truly was the Son of God. So the Bible tells us that the two hearts of Jesus and Mary were both pierced because of their united love for God's people. This is the central event and most important truth of the Gospels. In recent times, God's prophecy and private revelation has been telling us that these two hearts are central to God's strategy and plan in this, the final battle now unfolding at the end of this age for the great victory to come. In fact, the devotion to the two hearts is the last and greatest devotion God has given the world before the second coming of Christ to literally help save the world in these times. Therefore, God himself is asking each of us to give these two hearts our greatest devotion and highest esteem. Thus, nothing deserves our attention right now more. So please, give this video, video your full attention and total focus right now for the honor and glory of the two hearts. Today we will discuss what is God revealing to humanity about these two hearts through prophecy and private revelation and what are the secrets now revealed of how God has given us specifically this devotion to fight the final apocalyptic battle against Satan, the false prophet, and the Antichrist, now unfolding in the world in this generation, and to bring humanity to the great victory, the second coming, and the millennial era of peace. I am Catholic theologian Dr. Kelly Bowring, and this is episode six in a 13-part video series on the warning, the miracle, and the apocalypse and this episode is entitled, Entering the Heart of the Apocalypse, God's Final Devotion to Save the World in These End Times. Unfortunately, most people don't understand what's really happening in the church today. Like the two-party political system in the United States, whereby one is embracing evil and the other good, while they seem like they are just two sides of the same coin, in reality, they're far different when it comes to the moral agendas that they're seeking to represent and fulfill. So too in the Catholic and Christian churches now, there is splintering two different sides. On one side, the false church is made up of sacraments that affect no grace, and leaders who condone sin and call what is wrong right and right wrong. And on the other side is the remnant church of Catholics and Christians who keep the faithful prayers and the solid teachings of the Bible and the sacraments intact with the original grace, effects, and they obey the Ten Commandments of the Divine Law and thus continue to guide their members to true salvation and holiness. Yet like the two parties of the American political system, these two churches look similar, almost like two sides of the coin. But they're, in reality, vastly different. One is the true church and one is the false church. And they're at war with each other. Though the false church pretends nothing is happening and the true church is just waking up to the reality of the apocalyptic war now unfolding according to prophecy. The book of Revelation is now unfolding in this generation. And this is the two sides of the final battle. It will most mostly play out in the church. And the false prophet and the Antichrist will lead the false church against the true believers of the remnant church, whom they will eventually persecute until God intervenes with justice. 
and the remedy and the weapon God has given us in these end times is the final devotion for the final battle. The secret weapon directly from heaven given to us through God's prophecy and private revelations. Like the two secret atomic bombs that the United States used against Japan in World War II to win the war. These are the two secret weapons, namely the hearts of Jesus and Mary, that God has given us to win the final war of the apocalypse in these last days. You must pray that the scale of destruction in the world be thwarted. For were you to witness what lies in the future, you would fall at Jesus' feet begging for mercy. Those who fail to keep the word of God faithfully in his churches on earth will be responsible for the loss of many millions of souls who would otherwise have been saved. But the battle is not over. In the midst of what seems like a losing fight already, all of a sudden, we have found it. The tree of life, the pearl of great price, the treasure buried in a field in which we go and sell all we have to purchase. In this sixth episode of a 13-part series on the warning, the miracle, and the apocalypse, we are going to discuss what God literally thinks is the most important thing we should be focused on, and it's what He is focusing on and wanting us to focus on even more than the false prophet Pope or the Antichrist or the warning or the great miracle itself, or even the coming chastisement from God. What could possibly be more important than all those things? What is God's main focus? And also the very last devotion he's going to give the world, the final devotion on this earth, and the one he's been preparing for, for all of history. And it's not just that he wants us to do this devotion so that we can get through this final battle from this point, before the warning of his mercy and the miracle of Our Lady's love, all the way through the time of the chastisements, the persecutions from the false prophet and from the Antichrist. But even more importantly, what is the divine end game? What is heaven's goal? What is the whole real plan that God has that's even bigger than all that? Well, we shall see in this episode six that the divine endgame of this final battle of the apocalypse is greater than we could have ever imagined. Stay tuned in this episode. We're going to discuss that and so much more. It is the greatest devotion of all time and the one that God has been preparing for and revealing slowly, little by little, until now. And it's fully revealed to us as the last and greatest devotion of these end times. And even more than that, it is the first and the greatest devotion in the new kingdom of the new Jerusalem, of the new heavens and the new earth, and of the millennial new era of peace that is soon to be upon us. You're not only going to be amazed, you're not only going to have a greater sense of your entire life's purpose and value and how to make it bear the most fruit from now on, but you're going to ask, why didn't anyone tell me about this sooner? And even though I sort of knew some of it, you might say, why did I not see it till now? Thank God that I did indeed see it now. You're about to say that, and how glorious it is. So let us get this straight. Heaven has been asking us in every major private revelation and prophecy and heavenly message to visionaries and prophets for the last 200 years, especially since Rudabach in 1830, and with ever-increasing amounts and with ever-increasing importance and with ever-increasing seriousness, to honor and promote the two hearts of Jesus and Mary, and particularly and especially to place them from now on side by side. And that doing so would save us and save all the troubles of our times and save the church and save the whole world and bring us the final victory. 
And yet, not only is, it all, is almost no one doing it or has done it, but no one is even talking about it or even acknowledging it. What is going on here? When was the last time that you have ever heard anyone in the church in a homily or even in the Vatican itself ever speak about promoting the two hearts or uniting the two hearts or even about the two hearts at all? And yet looking at requests from God and his prophets in the Bible historically, when God warned the Ninevites through the prophet Jonah that they were about to experience his wrath, they repented. They listened in sackcloth and ashes, and God relented. And when God told Israel to march around Jericho seven times, blowing their trumpets, they listened, and they did it, and the walls fell. And when the prophet Elisha told Naaman to go bathe seven times in the river Jordan, he listened, even if he couldn't understand, and he was healed. But now today, in our times, in this case, when it counts the most, God's messengers and prophets have given us this divine plan and plea from heaven itself to honor the two hearts in these times to save the world, and yet no one is listening, or almost no one. Certainly no one in the church has discussed this or acknowledged it, but instead all ignore it or outright reject it blatantly. Perhaps it seems too simple, or it's only for old ladies and their pieties, or maybe it's just considered optional, or just for personal devotion only, and like just another subjective devotion among many others. With this one, no one more important than the others. Or maybe there's a diabolical plan to silence this message. But I ask you, how many other devotions have been revealed to us from heaven in these times? And over and over again, how many other devotions have received so much focus and attention from heaven as this devotion has? But whatever the reason, the devotion to the two hearts has been altogether completely and totally ignored. It's as if the two hearts themselves were never even revealed to us. It's as if God and his mother aren't even asking for this devotion, much less making it the central topic of all private revelations from heaven for the last 200 years until now. Even as they do so with more urgency and frequency in recent years, until this very day, through every private revelation and Catholic prophecy. But Jesus and Mary have warned us that should we ignore them and reject them, as we certainly have till now, even to the point of putting these two witnesses of our times to death in a way as we have. This devotion of the two hearts will cause us, if we neglect it, to suffer all the woes of the end time chastisements until we finally listen and call out to heaven for the mountains to fall on us or maybe even finally for the triumph and reign of the two hearts, as God wills. And prophecy says we are to ask for, and it says will indeed happen, but not until we suffer the chastisements and call out for it finally. And thank God and how great it is that even should we not call for our own good and that of the whole world, that they still tell us and promise us that their two hearts will triumph and reign no matter what in the end, but not until the end of this final battle. So stubborn will our rejection continue to be until then, but not till the end, the end of this final battle. As Our Lady of Fatima said, only in the end my Immaculate Heart will triumph and we will enter the era of peace. But at what price, and how much cost, and with what chastisements and diabolic injuries and sufferings we will continue to have to endure between now and then, because we rejected the heavenly messages of our times, and the promises that were made with them, 
and what we would have received had we listened and responded as they from heaven itself requested. Had we just accepted and honored and entered the two hearts as they requested. And just as we did not listen to Our Lady at Fatima in 1917, who said that if we would convert and pray the rosary, then we would avoid and divert the coming unfolding of the three secrets that she had given then. But we didn't listen. The Second World War did happen, and communism did take over half the world. And now as the third secret continues to unfold, we will see the destruction of the world and the church and the martyrdom of the good Pope and many of the priests and faithful, and that so that through them and their sacrifices and prayers, the world can still be saved and the two hearts still triumph and reign in the end and in the final victory to come in this very generation. But just so you've been forewarned and can't say you didn't know, as heaven is so clear through these prophecies and private revelations of our times, what is coming upon the world between now and the victory of the two hearts is going to make World War II and the previous stages of communism and the Cold War seem like the pre-tribulation chastisement it truly was in comparison to what's coming upon the world and already beginning to unfold right now. Do you not see the clash of evil in America's political system and in Europe today? Did you not see the Catholic Church's sex scandal and Francis's previous synods and the Amazon synod with its blatant idol worshiping in Rome? Do you not see China and Russia rising? Do you not see the apocalyptic storm of evil brewing in the world and dominating everything all around us? For those of you who do want to listen now and see, I want to speak to you today about the divine prophecies from heaven concerning the two hearts of Jesus and Mary in these end times and how centrally important this final devotion is for the salvation of the whole world before Christ comes again in glory and establishes the new heavens and earth and the millennial era of peace. Whether or not the church listens between now and then about this, at least you and I can as of right now and moving forward from today. And with this, the battle will turn in our favor. The enemy will be put to flight. On the battlefield, the two flags of the two hearts will be from this moment forward our battle cry as we march onward to the great victory and the salvation of the whole world. Let each of us, the remnant of the remnant, pick up and carry these two flags into the battle right now. So let us begin by declaring, we will listen, we will respond, we will accept, we will participate in the two hearts devotion that God has given us for these end times. We will honor the two hearts as God requests and in the way he requests, and we will do so in our hearts, in our daily prayers, in our homes, in our own families, and in our communities and parishes. We will support the triumph and reign of the two hearts of Jesus and Mary from this day forward. All honor and glory be to the two hearts of Jesus and Mary. Amen and amen. The book of Revelation chapter 11 states, I will commission my two witnesses to prophesy in the end days. The two witnesses are on the one hand, the Catholic Church and Israel. But on the other hand, and for this discussion today, they are also the two hearts of Jesus and Mary coming from heaven in our times as the witnesses to prophesy and give the world heavenly messages and instructions about the final battle of the apocalypse and the great victory to come and how to get there. The world is about to enter the new era of peace and of the spirit, but only through the great tribulation of evil and divine chastisement of purification. This will be the new era of the two hearts, of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart and the new universal reign of the Sacred Heart. But we must not wait until then. We must go to the two hearts of Jesus and Mary now, and as the angel of Fatima said, 
the hearts of Jesus and Mary are attentive to the voice of your supplications. St. John Eudes, who St. Pius X called the Father, Doctor, and Apostle of the Hearts of Jesus and Mary Devotion, enunciates this devotion saying, I shall only tell you that you must never separate what God has so perfectly united. So closely are Jesus and Mary bound up with each other that whoever beholds Jesus sees Mary. Whoever loves Jesus loves Mary. Whoever has devotion to Jesus has devotion to Mary. He continues elsewhere saying, although the heart of Jesus is distinct from the heart of Mary and infinitely surpasses it in excellence and holiness, nevertheless, God has so closely united these two hearts that we may say with truth that they are but one because they have always been animated with the same spirit and filled with the same sentiments and affections. Jesus is enshrined in the heart of Mary so completely that in honoring and glorifying her heart, we honor and glorify Jesus Christ himself. And during the first apparition of Jesus to St. Margaret Mary, he discussed the new devotion he wanted to his sacred heart. And this is how the vision began. She recounted, once being before the blessed sacrament and having a little more leisure than usual, I felt wholly filled with his divine presence and so powerfully moved by it that I forgot myself and the place in which I was. I abandoned myself to this divine spirit and yielded my heart to the power of his love. Appearing to me, he made me rest for a long time on his divine breast, where he revealed to me the wonders of his love and the inexplicable secrets of his sacred heart, which he had hitherto kept hidden until now. Then Jesus spoke to St. Margaret Mary as she lay on his heart. My divine heart is so passionately in love with humanity that it can no longer contain within itself the flames of its ardent charity. It must pour them out by thy means and manifest itself to them to enrich them with its precious treasures, which contain all the graces of which they have need to be saved from perdition. And later, it was in the miraculous medal, apparitions to St. Catherine Labore, that really begin to show God's plan to unite the two hearts in his final devotion given to the world before he comes again. On the back of the medal revealed by Mary, there was the M and a cross with the two hearts of Jesus and Mary, all encircled by 12 stars, which is the church and the 12 nations of the new kingdom to come in the era of peace. The church and the new kingdom surrounding the two hearts of Jesus and Mary. And Mary promised, all who wear this medal will receive great graces And it became known as the Miraculous Medal for that very reason. Continuing his revelations about wanting us to place the Immaculate Heart of Mary alongside his own Sacred Heart, Jesus also spoke to Blessed Dina Belenger, who died in 1929 at the age of 33. He told her of his desire to reign with his heart and souls through the heart of Mary, so that their hearts could reign and triumph together from now on and for all ages henceforth, saying, no prayer better describes the immense desire of my heart to reign in souls with Mary's heart than Eucharistic heart of Jesus. May your kingdom come through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Our Lady too instructs us to enter into the safety of her Immaculate Heart as told to us by the saints. Shortly before her death, Blessed Jacinta of Fatima told her cousin, Lucia, In a short time now, I am going to heaven. You are to stay here and say that God wishes to establish in the world the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Tell everybody that God grants graces through the Immaculate Heart of Mary and that they must ask her for them. 
And here is the most important heavenly message of our times, of the end times themselves. And there will be no further or greater revelation until Christ returns than this. Jacinta went on saying, Tell them that the heart of Jesus wishes that by his side should be venerated from now on the Immaculate Heart of Mary, side by side. She continues, tell them to ask peace through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. God has placed it in her hands. Oh, that I could put into the heart of everybody the flame that I feel burning within my breast and which makes me love so much the heart of Jesus and the heart of Mary. And then she died. We are pleased to offer this limited edition image of the two hearts that we're going to send to those generous donors who give at least $50 a month to support my work of spreading the heavenly messages of our times and regarding and analyzing the signs of the times in relation to them. So if you go to Two Hearts Press website and you click on the right-hand column giving a donation and you select a monthly donation of at least $50 a month, in our appreciation and thanksgiving, we will send you this limited edition image of the Two Hearts. So even more recently, the popes have agreed. St. John Paul II stated, In the history of salvation, therefore, the two hearts are insepar inseparably united. And this definitive alliance is integral to the church's doctrine, to her piety, and her liturgical celebration, and her pastoral pedagogy. And all the saints as well. St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta explains the relation between the two hearts, saying, The heart of Mary is the door which leads us directly to Jesus' heart. She is the gate through which we enter his sacred heart. Each Hail Mary, we pray, opens our heart to his love and leads us into a deeper union with the Eucharistic heart of Jesus. And it will come to pass. It actually will happen and soon. The coming new era of peace will usher in the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the new reign of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And Christ's new reign will be not one of a visible or physical ruling over this world, but a spiritual ushering in of the new kingdom of the divine will and his new Eucharistic reign. He will then reign in souls and be glorified by the whole created universe. This new era will coincide with the greatest triumph of the Eucharistic Jesus and with the complete fulfillment of the divine will. Thus, let us look forward with hope to and prepare for the triumph and reign of the two hearts, the great era of peace, and the establishing of the universal kingdom of the divine will on earth, as it is in heaven. And let us spread this good news with urgency and love. The Lord revealed much of the details of the intimacy of his sacred heart to St. Faustina in the early 20th century. She is the Polish nun who became the Lord's Apostle of Mercy, receiving many private revelations from Jesus and Mary. Jesus asked her to share his great desire to give humanity his mercy. Jesus revealed to her the divine decree for the Feast of Divine Mercy. He also expressed his desire to be venerated through the image of his Sacred Heart saying, I promise that the soul that will venerate this image of my sacred heart will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies already here on earth and especially at the hour of death. I myself would defend it as my own glory. By means of this image of my sacred heart, I shall grant many graces to souls. It is to be a reminder of the demands of my mercy because even the strongest faith is of no avail without works. The perfect devotion centered on the heart of Christ is a final gift of Christ's love for humanity in these end times. Just as St. Margaret Mary confirmed, saying, This devotion 
of Jesus' sacred heart is the last effort of his love that he will grant to men in the latter times in order to withdraw them from the empire of Satan, which he will destroy. So God has waited until our times to draw our special attention to his heart because he wants his heart to be the remedy of our souls in these times, to rouse us from our lethargy so that we will become inflamed with divine love and seek consolation in his most compassionate heart. God is asking our help in the destruction of Satan's empire. And it is through sacrifice and mercy that Satan will be defeated and prayer to the two hearts. And then will come God's justice. Jesus said to St. Faustina, you will prepare the world for my final coming. Speak to the world about my mercy. It is a sign for the end times. After it will come the day of justice. St. Faustina writes about a vision she received showing her how powerful the chaplet of Divine Mercy Prayer is for saving souls. I saw a great light with God the Father in the midst of it. Between this light and the earth, I saw Jesus nailed to the cross and in such a way that God wanted to look upon the earth but had to look through our Lord's wounds. And I understand that God blessed the earth for the sake of Jesus. I saw an angel, an executioner of God's wrath, about to strike the earth. I began to beg God earnestly for the world with words which I heard interiorly. That is the chaplet of divine mercy. As I prayed in this way, I saw the angel's helplessness and he could not carry out God's just punishment upon the world in those end times. That is the gift of the sacred heart and of the chaplet of divine mercy to the sacred heart of Jesus. As with the third secret of Fatima, this prophetic vision concerns the coming of God's just wrath for the sins of humanity, of Our Lady's intervention, and the heavenly calling for suffering and victim souls to offer sacrifices, prayers, and reparation for sinners. What a motivation this is to us all today. In addition to these words of our Lord, the Mother of Mercy, the Blessed Virgin, gave to Faustina this prophecy and instruction. She said, you have to speak to the world about Jesus' great mercy and prepare the world for his second coming. And he will come, not as merciful Savior, but as just judge. Oh, how terrible is that day. Determined is the day of justice, the day of divine wrath. The angels tremble before it. Speak to souls about this great mercy while it is still the time for granting mercy. To St. Faustina, our Lord stated, I am prolonging the time of mercy for the sake of sinners. While warning. But woe to them if they do not recognize this time of my visitation. Let us cry out, pray, sacrifice, and make reparation for souls to the two hearts of Jesus and Mary. St. Faustina received a prophecy from the Lord about the end times, about a coming event for the whole world, about the divine great warning of mercy. Jesus spoke to St. Faustina about a great darkness and a great sign of the cross, explaining what would accompany it, saying, Before I come as just judge, I am coming first as King of Mercy. Let all men now approach the throne of my mercy with absolute confidence. Some time before the last day of final justice arrives, there will be given to mankind a great sign in the heavens of this sort. All the light of the heavens will be totally extinguished. There will be a great darkness over the whole earth. Then a great sign of the cross will appear in the sky. From the openings, from where the hands and feet of the Savior were nailed, will come forth great lights, which will light up the earth for a period of time. This will happen before the very final days. It is the sign for the end of the world. After it will come the days of justice. Let souls now have recourse to the fount of my mercy while there is still time. 
Woe to him who does not recognize the time of my visitation. In the old covenant, I sent prophets wielding thunderbolts to my people. Today I am sending you, Faustina, and other prophets and visionaries with my mercy to the people of the whole world. I do not want to punish aching mankind, but I desire to heal it, pressing it to my merciful heart. I use punishment when they themselves force me to do so. My hand is pressing it and is reluctant to hold, to take hold of the sword of justice. Before the day of justice, I am sending the day of mercy, the day of the great warning of mercy that is soon to be upon us. This prophecy of the coming divine warning of the great sign of the cross in the sky is supported by Christ in scripture when he said in Matthew 24, immediately after the, the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And so it shall be shortly. The graces received will be the greatest in the history of the world since Christ died on the cross. We pray for the warning. We pray for it soon. God, bring us the great gift of your mercy, the mercy of your sacred heart in the divine warning as soon as possible for the sake of souls. Jesus spoke through Vesula saying, the Eucharistic adoration that I ask for is gonna help save the world. Devotion to my sacred heart in the Eucharist is the secret of your times. They not only give you the graces to cope with life's suffering, the graces of adoration do. They make you stronger in your love for me. The love that is poured out over souls during adoration is given in abundance. The soul feels this flood of my graces so that this first gift is one of peace in your soul. You feel this instantly after you have completed your time in close union with me. So many, many of my children are denying themselves the many gifts I have to offer at adoration, where you spend one hour of your time before my presence on the altar. While Catholics are aware of the power of the Eucharist, many do not acknowledge the importance of this most important time with me in contemplation. They simply ignore this gift and of my heart present before them. It bores them to have to spend this extra time with me. Oh, if only you knew how strong this would make you. Your fears and worries would be dissipated were you to just keep me company in quiet, intimate reflection. If my children could see the light that envelops their souls during this special holy hour, they would be astonished. Children, it is during this hour that you become very, very close to me. This is where your voice, your pleas, your pledges of love for me will be heard. Many wonderful graces are given to you, children, at this time. So please do not ignore my pleas to spend this time in my company. The rewards will make you free of worry. The rewards will make you light of heart, mind and soul, and calmer in yourself. When you receive me during the Eucharist, I will fill your soul. But when you come to me in adoration, I will envelop you to such an extent that the floodgates of my merciful love will saturate your mind, body, and soul. You will feel a strength which will yield a quiet confidence that you will find difficult to ignore. All I ask is for all of you who are in sorrow with trials and worries to hand me over now all of these concerns and allow me to deal with them. Trust in me and my heart and your burden will be eased. Let me guide you into a more peaceful state. And so also, given the revelations and prophecies of our times, God is focusing not just on the sacred heart, but as well on the immaculate heart of Mary. Even at Fatima, Our Lady said, God wishes to establish throughout the world devotion to my immaculate heart. In the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. 
Mary's Immaculate Heart. This is the Heavenly Father's secret gift as part of his plan for the salvation of the world in these end times. Sister Lucia of Fatima was given profound insights concerning the Immaculate Heart and God's plan for our times when she said, God is giving two last remedies to the world. These are the Holy Rosary and the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The two means to save the world are prayer and sacrifice. Finally, devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, our Most Holy Mother, consists in considering her as the seat of mercy, of goodness, and of pardon, and as the certain door by which we are to enter Christ's heart and eventually heaven itself. We have to recall even Our Lady of America saying, it is the darkest hour. But if men will come to me, my immaculate heart will make it bright again with the mercy which my son will rain down through my hands. Help me save those who will not save themselves. Help me bring once again the sunshine of God's peace upon the whole world. We must see the focus of heaven on the two hearts in the prayer during the third apparition of the angel of Fatima in October 1916. The angel appeared to the three shepherd children holding a chalice in his hands with a host above it from which drops of blood were falling into the chalice and taught them to say to the triune God about the two hearts, O Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly. I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifference by which he is offended by the infinite merits of the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, I beg the conversion of poor sinners. Amen. Don't you get it now? It's all been about establishing the two hearts devotion to save the world in these end times. That has been heaven's focus to the visionaries and prophets for the last 200 years all for this final apocalyptic battle now unfolding in this generation, to bring the world to victory, to the new 1,000-year era of peace. And almost no one sees it, but there is hope. Jesus says through Basula, So now, you must be patient in spreading this devotion and have these words constantly in your mind. In the end, our two hearts shall triumph. What I have commenced and blessed, I will finish. Be glad that our two hearts, like two olive branches, are among you to restore you to health and heal your wounds. Rejoice and be glad that our two hearts, like two lamps, are guiding your steps into the new kingdom and eventually into heaven where you belong. To what can you liken my mercy? My spirit of truth descends all the way to your doorstep of your heart to remind you that in the end, our two hearts will triumph. This is to fulfill the words written in scripture. After the three and a half days, God breathed life, life into the two witnesses and they stood up. Yes, in all glory, for these are the two anointed ones who stand side by side. Our two hearts are like two olive trees, one to the right and one to the left. I am coming to resurrect your devotion to my sacred heart and the immaculate heart of your mother, so do not fear. Some of you today are sad because the world is passing premature judgment on my sacred heart and on the immaculate heart of your mother. But soon our two hearts will show the world how wrong it has been about judging us. 
If a stranger comes your way and tells you that the food I have been giving you in these prophecies and heavenly messages is vile, do not listen to him. Listen to the language of my sacred heart, the language of my cross. Let your fidelity be to my sacred heart and let it bloom once more. Consecrate yourselves all to my sacred heart and the immaculate heart of your mother. So courage, my friends, Jesus continues. He's asking some questions of us now, saying, You're hounded, but it is only by the world? You're insulted for my sake? Rejoice, for I was too. You're treated as the offal of the world because you love me? I bless you and join you in your sufferings. You're the jest of the people, but so was I, I your king. You are not more than me, your master. My secret intentions are revealed now. In your dormant times, the revelation of my sacred heart and my mother's immaculate heart is revealed in these end times again to awaken your hearts and bring you all back fervently to this devotion. So among you there must be no premature judgment about this. Love us and bless us. We are always with you and we will continue to reveal the riches of our hearts to each one of you who believe. So it is time to believe, to resurrect this devotion and put it center stage, to place it on the altar of our hearts, to place this devotion at the front of the battle, yes, the flags of the two hearts, side by side on the front lines of the final battle to march forward with them front and center to the great victory that lies ahead. We must consecrate ourselves to these two hearts right now. Begin by offering Jesus your heart and praying truthfully from your heart to him. Your prayers will sanctify your soul and those of others. Pray without ceasing and make the evil one flee. Be united to Jesus, be rooted in him. Then no one and nothing in this world will come between you and him. He comes to you right now with his heart in his hand. Take it and place his heart in your heart. He comes from heaven to give this final devotion of the two hearts before his imminent return. This is his final message and plan. He is calling us to turn our hearts to God and live holy lives. Great and final gift from heaven in our end times is the devotion to the images of the two hearts of Jesus and Mary. The greatest secret that heaven is revealing to us in these times is the secret of the two hearts. Heaven is telling us that the promise of safety and protection comes through devotion to the two hearts especially when placed side by side. And placing them together and side by side is God's will and plan for the final battle and the great victory. Do you understand? Do you get it? The two hearts is the message from God in these times. It is the divine message of our times, of the end times. And it is being almost completely ignored and even outright rejected. May God help us. The time for placing the two hearts side by side and front and center is now. Please, all of you who do not believe Jesus is communicating with mankind today about the end times and this being the last generation before he returns, I ask that you pray to his sacred heart and ask Mary's Immaculate Heart to help you see. Ask their love and truth to envelop you through their two hearts and let go of your fears. It's your decision. They are telling us that in these times, prayer and devotion to the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Mother will be your armor in this final battle. The time for the triumph of Mary's Immaculate Heart is not far away. Her Immaculate Heart is the refuge to which you must turn so that through her intercession, you can renew your faith and trust in her son. Go to Mary and she will take you into the refuge of her immaculate heart and prepare you so that, you so that she can take you to her son 
and into his sacred heart in readiness for his second coming. He wants to embrace you in his sacred heart so that you will enjoy the new era of peace on earth. If only you will respond and soon. In these end times, Jesus will do everything in his divine power without interfering with our free will to turn our hearts back to his sacred heart by praying even just once a day and asking his sacred heart to pour out his love on us, we will very soon feel differently. And our own sufferings, both of the mind and of the soul, will bring us closer to his sacred heart. Please give his sacred heart specific time of your day in silence and let him draw you closer to his heart in love. Frightening at times, you must understand that not only does your redemptive suffering bring you closer to his sacred heart, but it will save millions of souls during the warning. It may seem unfair, but the closer you come to his sacred heart, the more you suffer his own sufferings because of the sins of mankind, especially today. When you suffer because of him, and when you feel isolated, Know that this is when you are closest to his sacred heart. And know that when he has sent his mother to help you, especially in these last times, she is the mediatrix of all graces and has been assigned by heaven to bring you to the sacred heart of her son Jesus in order to save mankind from the ruination that awaits us should we fail to detach ourselves from the works of Satan and from sin. But like her son, she is being rejected, scorned, insulted, and demeaned in the world and even in the church. And to all those who doubt God's word, given through solid end time prophecy today, please ask his beloved mother to bring you closer to his sacred heart. Because by asking for her help, she can bring souls directly to the sacred heart of her son, Jesus Christ. Immaculate heart of Mary, bring us to Jesus' sacred heart so as to open our eyes to God's love, truth, and mercy and to the signs of the times unfolding before us in this last generation. And may your two hearts triumph and reign as God wills. So a little personal story, uh, an eight-year-old girl I know, very close to me, was caught last week passing a letter in class, and her parents gave me permission to share this account of what happened. The letter she wrote read, I'm sad and depressed. I don't have anything to live for anymore, except maybe my crush, but he probably doesn't care about me so I think I will commit suicide. The teacher gave the note to the school counselor who called the child's parents. And of course I found out about it. I cannot tell you what the news of this letter by this child very close to me immediately did to my heart. It was pierced. It nearly stopped. I wanted to save this child with all my being and the thought of losing this child so pained my heart in that moment that it nearly stopped my heart. So I dropped everything and went straight over to see the child who wrote this letter and I brought her a special gift. And with tears in my eyes, I just held her for the longest time and prayed and prayed for her. I will never forget what agony that moment brought to my heart. I would have wanted to die in her place if I could have at that moment. And how glad I was that the letter was intercepted in time and we could help this child before something happened as the letter described. I literally thought I could not have survived had this child done what it appeared she was planning. This gets us to the heart of the apocalypse of which this video episode is about. 
the two united hearts of Jesus and Mary who love each of us more than anyone else in the whole world will ever love us, who lived for each of us with all their love and sacrifices while on earth, and who live for love of us now in heaven, are having to watch as each of us approaches committing spiritual suicide, eternal suicide, because we have given ourselves over to sin and deceit and are not even considering true repentance. It's game over for us, and they just have to stand by and watch as we kill ourselves. But no, the two hearts have a plan. And our suicide letter has been intercepted by God himself. And he has sent the two hearts to save us, to have their hearts pierced on our behalf, and even to die in our place if they have to. And they did, and they will again if necessary. That is what the Two Hearts devotion is really about. And the days are coming now when the Two Hearts will be pierced again for our sakes. So, I want to finish telling you what happened in this situation with this eight-year-old girl. After some time, we took her out to dinner to spoil her and treat her with some extra affection. And as we were talking, she then revealed that the note was not about her at all. It was part of a few notes she had been writing to her friend about a game they were playing in which they both were developing various characters, some good and some bad, and that the letter was one of the bad characters for the game. When I asked her why she wanted the character to commit suicide, she explained that she thought suicide meant that the character would be hurting others as part of her bad character. She had no idea that the word suicide meant killing oneself. She even made it very clear she herself was not even depressed at all, but actually the opposite. <laughs> but that coincidentally, she did have a crush in real life though. My relief was great. Oh, the lessons of life. In the end, I was glad for the situation in that it showed me how much I love this child so dear to my heart and how much the two hearts of Jesus and Mary must love each one of us and how much God is asking us to love them in return as his gift to us to save each of us in the whole world in these end times from eternal suicide. One of the greatest insights into the two hearts of Jesus and Mary devotion from God to us in these times comes from the messages of Jesus through and Mary through Vesula Ryden. Vesula says, Lord, many condemn prophecy. I understand too, since there are many false prophets. And Jesus responded, men of little faith, how could you fail to understand what I have been teaching you? I have said that in the end times, many false prophets will arise, and you should be aware of them. But have I not said that you will be able to tell them by their fruits? Why are so few following my instructions? Your hearts are, are still very far from our two hearts because you have not yet understood the meaning of our manifestations, nor of our words and our messages. You have not yet grasped the meaning. God is now coming to everyone, but many of you do not believe. I am sending you messenger after messenger to break through your deafness, but I am weary now of your resistance and your apathy. I am ever so weary of your coldness. I am weary of your arrogance and your inflexibility when it comes to assembling for unity. My church is in ruin because of your division. You're not applying my advice. My children have forsaken the paths of righteousness, the fountain of wisdom. They're not listening to our two hearts. What great disorder they have produced and what oppression they have put upon our two hearts. I tell you, I will soon descend in full force with my Holy Spirit to give sight to the blind and take away the sight from those who say they see. Let it be that my message becomes so ample, so vast, testifying itself, 
that those with wickedness, apathy, and atheism will be seized and will repent. And if men ignore you now, Vasula, do not let this afflict you, nor bring you sorrow. Do not despair, because your oppressors will look back in the day of the purification and will weep, remembering their rejection. They will realize how they were, rejecting our divine hearts, not you, our two hearts, that prophesied to them so often and with so much love. The world today has again misjudged the times and cannot recognize the signs either. The world does not listen to our two hearts, nor understand them. They are rejecting us. But the hour is near when a light will shine from above, and our two hearts, like two lamps shining near each other, will revive this world, bringing it from darkness to light. These two hearts the world has ignored and combated will prevail in the end. And the kingdoms of the world will pass away and be replaced by the kingdom of our two hearts. This is all very near you now. With great love and tenderness, our two hearts in these last days have been teaching you all over again that prayer, love, and humility are the keys to your salvation. But how many of you have really penetrated this truth? And the advices and the supplications from your Holy Mother, along with my agonies and cries from my Holy Cross to the world, have remained stagnant. We have come to offer you all our peace and prepare you for your journey to the new era. But love has been rebuked and peace treacherously replaced by lethargy and a spirit of wickedness. I went in all directions, seeking by what means I might awaken you from your perpetual lethargy and encourage you to return to me to live holiness, but I heard no sound from you. What could I have done more that I have not done? My friends, you have not taken seriously our calls I descended to offer you my heart. I have inscribed you in the flesh of my heart. I have written my love hymn to all of you. I visited you. My eyes stream with tears and our two hearts are lacerated anew because you have not persevered in the path of holiness. Instead, the world made fun of our merciful calls and no one has been really listening. Instead, Satan has entered into the hearts of my children, finding them weak and asleep, though I have warned the world. Fatima's message speaks that in my day I shall make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will allow the dragon to bite this sinful generation and hurl a fire the world has never seen before or will ever see again to burn her innumerable crimes. You will ask, will all the inhabitants perish, the good with the bad? And I tell you, the living will envy the dead. Out of two men, one will be taken. Some will ask, where are Elijah and Moses who are to come? And I tell you, you evil generation, our two hearts have not been speaking in parables all these years. Elijah and Moses have come already, and you have not recognized us, but treated us as you pleased. You have not listened to our two hearts, the immaculate heart of my mother and my sacred heart, you faithless generation. Our two hearts have not been speaking to you in parables nor in riddles. All our words were light and our hearts like two lamps shining near each other so bright that everyone may see. But you have not understood. Our hearts like two olive trees 
one to the right and one to the left were so were for so many years trying to revive you. Like two olive branches pouring oil to heal your sick generation and heal your wounds. But your generation treated our two hearts as they pleased. Our two hearts are anointed and are living. They're like a sharp sword, double-edged, prophesying. But the rebellious spirit of this generation is re-crucifying our word, the double-edged sword, and rejecting our two hearts who speak to you today, just like Sodom's and Egypt's rejection of my messengers in the Bible. This era's stubbornness has surpassed Pharaoh's because their claims to their knowledge have become a battlefield to my knowledge. Indeed, our two hearts have become a plague to the people of the world today. But soon, very soon now, my voice shall be heard again. I shall visit you by thunder and fire. Justice is at hand. And our two hearts you have combated shall prevail in the end. And the kingdom of the world will become my kingdom. This is all very close now. You can purchase these Two Hearts picture sets at twoheartspress.com. I make a wonderful gift to family and friends. Perhaps you'll give a set to everyone on your Christmas list. Give it out to family members at Thanksgiving. Maybe to people in your prayer group or even to the whole parish. You can order them at twoheartspress.com www.twoheartspress.com Order them now. Make this part of your devotion for the triumph and reign of the two hearts and the great victory. So let me finish today's episode on the two hearts with a meditation from Jesus and Mary through Vesula. Jesus says, I, Jesus Christ, suffer excessive torments to watch the criminal slaughter of innocent babies, human sacrifices perpetrated with blasphemy against my name, and for the downfall of the present papacy, while the hands of the blasphemers are stretched out so infamously against my holy sacrifice, my house, and my word. I, for my part, am pouring my blessings on him who perseveres in holiness and does not succumb in disgrace to their assassin plans on my church. I am parading their deceitful designs to the world. The two hearts which march together with you, infuri infuriating on our journey the mobs of evil powers as we walk by them, becoming a menace to them while we advance, We will storm their city of evils, and these evil forces will have to face me, your God, in all my divinity. Today they are raging like wild beasts because they know that our triumph and reign is soon to come. Mary continues through Vesula. Our two hearts are wounded and are crying out with pain to all of you to amend, to pray, to fast, and truly to love my son in the blessed sacrament. Today our hearts feel your division. The injuries of our two hearts are innumerable. If the flock of the Lord is divided and dispersed and the land reduced into a desert, if rebellion against all the holy rules of God has reached its peak, if today cardinal goes against cardinal, bishop against bishop, and priest goes against priest, as a key to also prophesy. It is because your generation refused to listen to my words, Mary says. I was sent by the Most High to warn you and correct you gently. But to this day, your, your generation refuses us, uh, our two hearts, a place in its heart and does not take our words from heaven seriously upon you, you will draw what you have reaped. My motherly heart grieves to tell you this, and my eyes weep tears of blood at the sight I see before me. 
when the Father's hand will fall on you with a thundering cry. Enough, enough now. And in a tempest of fire, he will execute judgment. Our two pierced hearts are still solemnly warning you. And we will persist in warning you to change your hearts and turn them towards God. Only in God one can live. For he is your daily bread, your drink, and your breath. Let all the inhabitants of our two hearts know that very soon now our hearts, which are united into one, will triumph and reign, and many things that we foretold will be accomplished. The sacred heart of Jesus and my immaculate heart bless all of you. Be one in these end times. Now do you understand the two prophecy of the great warning of Jesus and his sacred heart and the great miracle of love of Mary's immaculate heart soon to come upon the world. Yes, the warning and the miracle as prophesied at Garabandal is at the heart of the apocalypse. The twofold great divine intervention of the warning and the miracle will be the work of the two witnesses, that is, the two hearts of Jesus and Mary, to help save the world in these end times, to prepare the world for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Up to now, no one or almost no one ever speaks even one word about the two hearts. But after the warning of the sacred heart and the miracle of the immaculate heart, no one will be not speaking of the two hearts. The whole world will see and declare the coming triumph and reign of the two hearts then. Jesus speaks through Vasilla, explaining why the heart of Mary, his mother, is being given to us along with his heart in these end times. Let me tell you, my sacred heart is your heaven. Creation, my sacred heart that so many of you deny and refuse is your heaven, your paradise, your kingdom, your inheritance, your place of rest for eternity. So approach this heart that loves you so, and I will pour out from my heart into your heart countless blessings to turn your soul as fair as springtime, to turn your soul into an ivory tower, a heaven for myself alone. How can anyone doubt of my love? Ah, oh, beloved, every time you doubt of my love, the sun darkens in my distress. And today I want to display in my great love the heart of my mother. My mother's heart and mine are so united that they have become one. The virgin of virgins, the holiest forever now in heaven, my mother continues to be proclaimed in heaven as my mother. What had been lost and profaned by Eve was to be gained and sanctified by the Virgin Mary through her perfect obedience and humility. And through this woman, the woman of Cana, the woman of Calvary, and now the woman of Revelation 12, my reign on earth will once more come. My reign on earth will be founded in each heart. Once more there will be poured on you my spirit, so lavishly that this aridity of now will be transformed into a fertile land. It had been said that at the end times, our two hearts would raise apostles and they would be called apostles of the end times. These would be instructed by the queen of heaven and by myself. Such were the famous prophecies of St. Louis de Montfort and others, St. Maximilian Colby as well to go forward in every nation to proclaim without fear the word of God, even when they would be drenched with blood by the enemy's vicious attacks, they shall not be broken. Their tongue would pierce the enemies of my church like a double-edged sword by exposing their heresies. I suffice by myself, as you know, but it is through Mary's virginal heart that my redemptive plan began 2,000 years ago, and it will be again through this holy heart that I will accomplish my end-time salvation 
plan. So honor her heart. Even you enemies who fly into a rage at the sound of her name. And understand that she is the joy of my sacred heart. The joy of my celestial court. So Jesus continues now explaining more of what is unfolding in these end times concerning the role of his mother's heart in forming the apostles of the final battle and of the end times. Have you not noticed how in these end times the queen of peace is passing over the earth, escorted by my angels, visiting with visionaries and prophets? Have you not noticed how her immaculate heart is proclaiming my word to you all and preparing for my reign? Have you not noticed how the Blessed Mother's heart is training her children and forming them heart to heart so that everyone is ready to fight for my reign? Have you not noticed how from her treasury she is perfecting you in her heart for me? I have given the Queen of Heaven and Earth all the jewels of wisdom in her heart. And from this treasury, she gives abundantly her graces to take you out of the power of darkness and to make you great saints and apostles and great warriors to join her in this great and final battle of these end days. The Jacobs of today are her children, the apostles of the end times and the end time great saints that through my mother's heart are being raised and formed to be one heart with us forever and ever. For my reign in your hearts will have no end. Yet how can any of my creatures deny devotion to her heart and to mine? She is the ark of power vested in virtues. My new song, my heart, my citadel, in whom the maker of heaven and earth is ravished by her magnificence. She who stands in our presence, stands ever so close to all who invoke her. Yet how has man fallen so low and taken a deceptive path to deny even my mother's heart? This is the one whom we so highly favor, the one whom so many reject. And yet it is the ointment of your eyes, the balm of your wounds, the merciful plea to the eternal Father for your pleas, the intercessor and the advocate of your soul. And now Jesus says, Today, man, open your heart. Then all the mysteries that appeared to you fathomless will be revealed to you by my divine light, thrice holy, and you will understand who the woman adorned with the sun is. Then your whole being will be lifted and your heart will be exalted in rapture when your eyes will be unveiled to see her blessed heart of blessed hearts, the most holy of saints, her incomprehensible heart, burning with unlimited love, a fire alight and so bright Though night still covers your mind and heart, arise. Arise and lift your eyes at this radiant sight of her heart that so many prophets wanted to see in their time but had not seen it. Arise and sing a new hymn to the hymn of the Most Holy Trinity. Sing and say, brothers and sisters, come and be covered by the mantle of grace and grace. Come and be covered by the Queen's light. Let us be overshadowed by the one who was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. Have you not heard how the nations will come to her light and that the kings will come to her dawning brightness when in the end her heart will triumph together with mine? An unfathomed mystery to the rich, but for the poor and the lowly, a blessing so longed for and now being fulfilled. 
And finally, Jesus warns about what the final battle of the apocalypse now unfolding in this generation is really all about. Today, in these end times, the final battle is raging. And you must understand where it is raging. It is raging against our two hearts and against our children of our two hearts and the devotion of the two hearts who are witnesses of the truth. I tell you, especially in these times, run to your blessed mother, who like a hen who hides her chicks under her wings will hide you too under her mantle. The days are coming now when our two hearts will be pierced again. My enemies are going to storm my sanctuary, my altar and my tabernacle, to erect their disastrous abomination. There is going to be a time of great distress, unparalleled since nations came into existence. By force and by treachery, they will invade my house. When the rebel comes and profanes openly, my sanctuary. Of course, this reminds us of when La Salette prophesied that the Antichrist will take up his seat in Rome after it loses the faith, and he will place himself in the place of the Eucharist after it is abolished, to become the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel and by the book of Revelation. This is now coming upon us. According to prophecy, the false prophet Pope currently reigning, is preparing for this in the final stages with the sacrileges and the pre-consecrations of evil to a tree in the garden of the Vatican, to a statue and to plants and soil in and around St. Peter's itself, all in preparation, pre-sacrileges, pre-consecrations for the ultimate preparation of the abomination itself, the sacrilege itself, the Antichrist. And Jesus warns, oh, how many of you will fall by his flatteries, but my own will not give ground. Instead, they will offer their lives for my cause. I tell you with tears in my eyes, you will, my people, be tested by fire by this invader. Listen this time and understand the invader denies my divinity, my resurrection, and my tradition. When he who crushes the holy people places himself, together with these traitors of my tradition, on my throne, his presence will be erected as a god in the center of my sanctuary. Be forewarned. But Jesus summarizes with hope through Vasula saying, in the end, our, heart, our two hearts will triumph and reign. Please understand that our two hearts will be your only refuge in the days of your distress. But know this. In the end, our two hearts will defeat the enemy and the great and universal transfiguration will take place. Then I shall renew the face of this earth. Remember, you are in our hearts. Know that in all our grief about what must transpire, when we see you coming to us to pray to our two hearts, a ray of consolation penetrates our two hearts and we are filled with overwhelming joy. So learn that prayer to our two images, to our two hearts, when done in love and humility, is the strongest weapon against Satan in these times. By your prayers, you are participating in the renovating and the great renewal of the church in this final generation. Listen, my children, consecrate yourselves and your families to our two hearts. Consecrate yourselves so that we can mark you as ours forever. And so let me leave you today with the end game. When this is all over, as we enter the new paradise, and even later when we enter the beatific vision, we too shall receive golden hearts in union with the two hearts of Jesus and Mary. 
for eternity, that shine as bright as the sun. For what we did here and now in regard to this final devotion from heaven, in these end times, and will continue to do until we reach the glory of the great victory and help the two hearts to save the last soul before Jesus comes again in this generation, as prophecy states he will. Daniel prophesied about the great saints of our time, saying, And those who are wise in those times shall, lo- shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. And we know how this is going to end with the triumph and reign of the two hearts of Jesus and Mary, and with our hearts united to theirs in the great victory. The sacred heart of Jesus will soon bestow the great warning of mercy to the whole human race. And the immaculate heart of Mary will within a year afterwards bestow the great miracle as she promised at Garabandal and Magigoria. And then later in the new kingdom and the era of peace, the immaculate heart of Mary will triumph through the rosary and the sacred heart of Jesus will reign through the Eucharist. So let us always pray saying, all for the triumph and reign of the two hearts of Jesus and Mary. Onward, Christian soldiers, to the great victory with our hearts now pierced in this final battle and later made golden, united to the two hearts forever. Amen. Let us finish today's episode saying the two consecration prayers to the two hearts that were given to us from heaven by Our Lady of Medjugorje. Consecration to Jesus. The Sacred Heart of Jesus, we know that you are merciful and that you gave your heart to us and that it was crowned with thorns by our sins. We know that even today you are still pleading with us so that we will not be lost. Jesus, remember us when we are in sin. By means of your Sacred Heart, grant us that all men love one another, cause hatred to disappear from among men. Show us your love, for we all love you and want you to protect us with your shepherd's heart and free us from all sin. Jesus, enter into each heart. Knock on the door of our hearts. Be patient and unwearied with us. We are still closed since we still have not yet understood your love for us. Knock persistently and grant, O good Jesus, that we open our hearts to you, at least when we will have finally remembered the passion you suffered for us. Amen. Consecration to Mary. O Immaculate Heart of Mary, overflowing with goodness, show us your love for us. May the flame of your heart, O Mary, descend upon all mankind. We love you so. Impress true love in our hearts that we may have a continuous devotion to you. O Mary, meek and humble of heart, remember us when we are in sin. You know that all men sin. Grant us by means of your Immaculate Heart to be healed from every spiritual illness. In doing so, we then will be able to gaze upon the goodness of your maternal heart and thus be converted through the flame of your motherly love. Amen. Eucharistic and sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Our Lady of Bowering of the Golden Heart, Our Lady of Bowering of Belgium of the Golden Heart, Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. In the next episode, episode seven, I will be continuing the theme of today's episode on the two hearts. Part two, on the Two Hearts devotion, will be on a surprise Hail Mary pass in the final battle, that of a third heart, which is God's final secret weapon for the final victory. So stay tuned, next episode. If you like my work, consider helping me in this mission. Go to Two Hearts Press website and on the right column, you can give a donation. God bless you. To make sure sure you receive notice of the remaining seven videos in this series, follow me on YouTube at Two Hearts Press Channel and on Facebook at Kelly Bowring. This is Catholic theologian Dr. Kelly Bowring signing out. Stay in the fight, fellow apostles of the end times and of the two hearts of Jesus and Mary. See you.